All right, I'm going to start with a short little story of mathematics from the 70s and 80s. So there's going to be a motivating problem that was solved in very beautiful fashion. So got some closed Ramonian manifold and a smooth map. And I'm going to make a definition. F is expanding. If there exists a greater than 1, such that if you look at the norm of the derivative of f acting on any tangent vector, it is strictly increased by a factor of a. So I have two points kind of close to each other, like so. And I apply f, and they get farther apart, like so. So you impose a somewhat naive question. What are all the expanding maps? And we'll get to a moment in what precise sense I mean by what are all the expanding maps. But for now, let's think about some examples. So here's an example. I could do if x equals 2x mod c, where I have the, the circle. So I can take the circle and double it over itself. This will expand everything with a factor of 2. I could do, say, if x y equals 2x, 3y mod c squared. So maybe this is like m equals t2. And I could continue in this fashion to get expanding maps on tori, defined in some algebraic fashion, by writing down any linear, any integer matrix, which has all eigenvalues greater than, of absolute value greater than 1. But it's clear that this is not sufficient to answer my question, because this condition is C1 open in the sense that if g is close to f and its derivative is also close to f, then it is also expanding. So if I take any of these examples and perturb them a little bit, so like here is m equals s1. And maybe this is my depiction of f of x equals 2x. I could perturb, make another picture. And this is some g of x equals a of x. Maybe I write it like a of x times x odd z or something like that, where a of x is pretty close to 2. And this will also be expanding. So what do I mean by this question? I have to revise it a little bit. It turns out here that f and g are topologically conjugate, which means that from a dynamical perspective, from the perspective that I care about, 
as a dynamicist, they are quote unquote topologically the same. So there is a, this is not an easy fact, by the way. There's some homeomorphism such that this equation holds. <laughs> and you can prove a similar fact on the uh, other tori, on the higher dimensional tori, that if you write down any expanding map, it's going to be topologically conjugate in this fashion to its action on the fundamental group of the torus. So I will revise my question to up to topological conjugacy. And now I've told you all these examples on the torus, and we could conjecture you know, that because this is all the examples I've told you about, this is in fact all of the examples. The fact that the thing is smooth to begin with, you don't want to ask for smooth conjugacy. Right. So this is going to be, in general, only a homeomorphism, because if you change, say, the uh, eigenvalue of this at a fixed point, then it can't be a smooth conjugacy anymore. So in general, this is only going to be continuous and not smooth. So I should not mislead you. Got to throw in another of our friends from the world. We have the 3D Heisenberg group. And if you do the following map, this will define an expanding automorphism of the following null manifold, where you mod out by the integer points. And this guy will also be an example that will fit into our previous paradigm over here. So I can't just think about tori. I also have to think about no manifolds. But the beautiful answer to this question is that once you've got it in your head, OK, I've got tori, I've got no manifolds, Gromov tells us from his wonderful polynomial growth theorem up to finite covers, all expanding maps are topologically conjugate to null manifold. I'll write it as null manifold endomorphisms to mean things like this. So in addition to the stuff that happens on the torus. So that is fantastic. A beautiful theorem capping much excellent work, particularly by Shub leading up to that. Uh, something like this, where you take a null potent Lie group and you mod out by some integer lattice inside of it. So this is saying that everything looks something like this example, that this is the only extra complication you have to throw in to encompass everything. You don't know anything about M to start. You conclude through uh, Gromov's argument that M is in no manifold after the fact. So it is part of the conclusion of the theorem that M is a no manifold. So there's really two steps in there. First, M is a no manifold. Then the thing is conjugate to the action on the fundamental group. So 
we can start over. And how do we start over? We're asked a new question. So I'll require f to be a diffio. Say that f is a Nosov if I will be very loose with this. If there exists a splitting like this, and I will write an example in a moment that will illustrate. And I will again be relatively loose with this, where this is expanded, and this is contracted. And I really want you to think about the following example, which is the most famous one, I think. This is going to be on T2, where A is the following matrix, and this is going to look like the following. I've depicted the eigenspaces of the matrix here. And one direction is expanded. The other direction is contracted. And let me also draw in the axes of the uh, z2. Um, and you can ask a similar question which is a now uh, notorious open question. I will phrase it as follows. Question, are all Anasov diffeomorphisms topologically conjugate to no manifold automorphisms? And I'll add up to finite covers. So uh, I'm going to be restricting now to uh, Diffio. Um, and because I opted to tell you this cute little story, I won't have time to say anything about the uh, strategy that I was going to go through for thinking about this question, um, I'll just end by remarking that the big thing that I'm looking into myself is uh, applications of quasi-conformal mapping theory. Well, so I am uh, personally uh, agnostic currently <laughs> over the true for false of the conjecture as stated. Uh, I will say that I believe tentatively that the conjecture is true if you add the condition that the diffeomorphism is transitive, that if, if it has a dense orbit. I don't know whether I believe it or not in general. I don't trust anybody who says that they have an answer. Well, I mean, some people. I, just I, I know of people who are trying to make counterexamples, <laughs> which is why I'm agnostic. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so I wanted to mention that one of the principal techniques I'm looking at is using quasi-conformal mapping theory 
from just metric measure spaces in general, as applying it to this problem in a particular way that I think is quite novel. So uh, that's something that strikes your interest. I'd like to be good to talk. Uh, but yeah, so that's the story I have to tell and all that good stuff.